All right, welcome back to the Super Light Coupe build. In this episode, we are going to mount the parking brake calipers. So, the prior video, we ran all the brake lines. As you can see, I've got one of the rear discs uh, positioned on the upright just to start to figure out these uh, parking brake calipers. But we'll segue over to the work table and I'll give you a sense for for what this entails. All right, so these are the optional parking brake calipers that you can order with Superlight Coupe. Uh, I ordered them. Uh, I will say though, a number of builders have had trouble getting these calipers to effectively uh, do their job. And they've transitioned over to either use Tesla calipers or there's some other uh, electric activated calipers on the market now uh, from Willwood and also high spec from the UK. But since I own these, I figured let me try to make them work. Uh, we're going to segue over to the back of the chassis and I'll give you a sense for how these mount. Okay, hopefully I'll keep this all in focus here. But anyway, here's the mounting bracket that comes with the kit. And essentially what you have to do is drill these uh, two M8, not M8, M10 uh, holes in the upright, and then you secure the bracket uh, to the upright. Here's the challenge. So you can see the front, the front is pocketed out, and the back is even, even pocketed out more deeply. And the, you know, the center, the center area on the uprights are only about 15 millimeters. And if you're putting in a 10, you know, M10 bolt, you have two and a half millimeters on each side of that bolt, which isn't, you know, isn't a lot of room. And it's easy to, uh, I guess, drill on an angle because you're drilling it on the car. Uh, I don't have a, a uh, drill press tall enough to, to sort of position the upright. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to come up with a different way of mounting the calipers. However, uh, there is an issue with the stock mounts, and I want to I want to segue back to the work table, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I fired up the trusty iPad here. Here's a, a picture of the SLC calipers. These are actually made by a company called Ipsco, and they're known for making a lot of parts for Dodge Vipers. I had a Dodge Viper years ago and bought some of their some of their components. But anyway, I think they look pretty darn good. Uh, but here's the issue. So I mounted I mounted the caliper on that rear that rear upright, and you can see there's about a quarter inch of pad that is not touching the rotor. Now I don't know why it's designed this way. Maybe. Uh, to accommodate uh, a bigger brake kit that is also optional, but if I want to get these calipers to grab, I want to adjust these brackets and make sure the maximum contact patch exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take one of these because I'm not going to use these anyway. I mean, you'll see I'll come up with another design. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to just start shaving this down. I think I have to shave it down between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, and then I'll have maximum contact patch. But that's the first thing we're gonna do. And then we'll talk about how we're going to attach the calipers to the uprights. Okay, so I milled one of the brackets down about two tenths of an inch, and that seems to have done the job. I, I, may, I may go a little more, you know, maybe a, another, uh, Another sixteenth of an inch or a little less. But anyway, uh, you know, this is the original picture we were looking at. This is about a quarter of an inch at the top, so clearly uh, you'll lose some brake efficiency. This is what it looks like now. It's a little dark, but you can see the tops of the rotors come out right to the top of the pad area. So I'll probably do one more pass on the mill, and then I'll use this as a template on the new bracket. Okay, well let's move on to the bracket design. I came up with three different designs and I'll, I'll yeah, I'll describe each one of them and, and each one has its 
advantages and disadvantages. So moving from left to right, you know, this is what I call the classic design. And another builder, uh, one of the early builds, uh, used a, almost an identical identical bracket, and this is really where I got the idea from. Uh, this leverages the bolts through the uh, hubs uh, to se secure the bracket to the upright. Then you've got the holes for the calipers. Uh, this is a bracket that is similar to another builder. Uh, he has different uprights on his car, and this attaches to the outside face of his upright. This would attach to the inside face of my upright, but there are two unoccupied holes on the uprights, and I could secure this without disturbing the hub bolts at all, and you know, secure that to the upright. And then lastly is really the hybrid approach, which is it takes the rearmost hole on the hub and the unoccupied hole on the upright, and it secures it to the to the upright. Okay, so those are the three designs. I'm not really not sure which one I'm going to use, but here are the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you know, the advantage to this is this is a pretty well accepted uh, design. You know, most aftermarket brake packages leverage the bolts that go through the hubs. Uh, the disadvantage is that the cap bolts that I have are pretty tall and the stub axles get really close to the cap bolts and the bolts that go through the stub axles may interfere with the cap bolts so I'd have to change the bolts out and put standard hex bolts and I may have to actually bring the bolt area down about you know about an eighth of an inch and make that area a quarter inch thick. Uh, this one, yeah, I really like this design because you know, you're not dealing with the hub bolts at all and, and interfering with the, you know, with the stub axles. The question I have is this would have to mount to the inside face of my hub where it was designed to sit on the outside face. I still need about an inch spacer here. And, you know, I'm just sort of thinking about the distance between here and here to attach the caliper plus the spacer, you know, I just don't know. I don't, I, I prefer to have, you know, another attachment point closer to this rear, the rear hole so you don't get twisting or where it bends up the bracket when you apply the brake. This is the hybrid approach and, you know, this would mount the bracket probably uh, more securely than the other two designs because you have the mounting holes closest to the caliper holes. The one concern I have is, you know, this will be a 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch spacer, and then you'll have a metal washer, and then the cap screw on top. And I'm just wondering if there's any sort of, you know, undesirable effects by having a spacer on one hub bolt and then no spacers on the other two hub bolts and you know that's a high stress area of the car and I'm not so sure I, I want to be I want to be engineering things on the fly uh, I do know this is a generally accepted way of adding a parking brake bracket so uh, ultimately I'll probably use this design but I'm going to mic up at least one of them in plywood and then uh, I'll pick a design I'll make it out of aluminum Okay, well, I think we got a winner here. I mocked up the first piece of plywood with design number one, and I like it enough that uh, this is the design I'm going to go with. So we'll take a closer look. Uh, you can see I got this uh, caliper. You can see sort of the tiny little gap between the pad, but anyway, this is sort of really good. Uh, let's see, we've got a stack of washers here. I'll replace this. Uh, with an aluminum with an aluminum uh, spacer and then if we take a peek around the side you see how the how the piece of woods attached to the upright and I actually used a uh, something called a transfer punch so there it is a little dark uh, yeah it's all about eight bucks from Harbor Freight 
And I will tell you, I made a ton of brackets for this car and had a center of holes to mount them. Those center punches would have came in handy. I, I wish I, I would have bought that set at the beginning of the build, but live and learn. So anyway, I am going to fab these up now out of aluminum. I'm not going to video the whole process of making the brackets. Uh, the next segue will show the completed brackets, okay? Okay, we're done fabricating the brackets. Uh, I always like to always like to uh, videotape, you know, the the evolution of a, of a part. You know, we always start off with paper or cardboard, move on to plywood, then we do the aluminum. And you know, I think these came out pretty good. You'll notice I pocketed I pocketed out the area of the hub bolts. Uh, turned out, you know, I have to use cap bolts. I thought maybe I can go with the hex bolt, but the cap bolts are stronger and they're the right bolts for for this use. They're uh, metric 12.9 bolts. So I shaved this down an eighth of an inch. You know, still plenty, plenty of strength. You know, I, I wanted a 3 eighth inch piece of aluminum just to eliminate flex and having a quarter inch pocket pocketed out area um, you know, will be more than strong enough just to clamp the bracket on onto the upright. All right, so we'll put these on the car and then we'll take a look. All right, well, this will be the final segment of this video. The caliper, the parking brake calipers are installed on the uprights. Let's see, a couple closing comments. So here's sort of a picture of where the caliper is placed. It's perfectly at the three o'clock position. I was able to get full contact, pad contact with the rotor. And you know, when I squeeze the actuator rod, those calipers grip really good. So maybe that was the issue why some other builders had, had problems getting these calipers to work. So fingers crossed these will, these will do the job. But I got the calipers perfectly, perfectly centered, um, you know, over the rotor. And there's about seven tenths of an inch gap on each side. I also fabbed up the aluminum spacers instead of the steel washer stack. Uh, that aluminum is probably a quarter of the weight, so so that's uh, you know that's always preferable, especially when it's uh, you know, when it's unsprung weight. Uh, let's see. There's also something I didn't mention. There's an adjustment bolt here. So this adjustment bolt, when you turn it, moves the caliper in or out. So you basically fab up the washer to get it really close, maybe within a tenth of an inch, and then you use the fine tuning to get it perfectly centered. Okay, so all in all it looks good. We'll take a peek sort of behind on the upright, and you can see the finished bracket mounted and torqued on the upright. So all in all, I'm happy with the end result. Hopefully they do the job. Uh, let's see, as always, thanks for watching and take care.